How's everyone doing? Good. I want to take a second and thank to Tango, thank all of you, thank our video and sound guys for helping put this on today. This would not have happened with any of them. So that said, thank you guys. Um, so after at risk implementing a save process, pretty straightforward, uh, but that's what we're going to talk about today. So you're in the right place. A little bit about me. My name is Michael Connery. I work for Better Cloud. I'm the director of customer success there. We are the first ever unified SaaS management platform. So what we do is we empower IT to help give them a single pane of glass for all the different applications used by almost anyone in this room. So you're using Salesforce, you're using Slack, you're using Dropbox, you're using Zendesk, you're using Google, Office, Okta, whatever. Your IT team needs to manage that. We ultimately empower them to, to do so in an easy to do way. With that, we have 3,000 customers across a seven-person team. Um, so I'm going to do the traditional Tango presentation thing and ask a question. How many of you guys have customers? Raise your hand. OK, good. You're in the right place. Um, second question, how many of you guys have lost a customer? All right, doing good. And last question, how many of you guys actually have a save process in place today? All right. so. Bat in a thousand. So, how did this all begin? Churn is that fear and paranoia that everyone in this room has. We wake up and there's some part of us somewhere in the back of our head that is saying, I really hope today is not the day that that big customer decides that we don't want to be a big customer anymore. So, that said, there's tons of different ways to figure out who a customer is that is at risk. You know, whether you're using a software like Tatango, you have a conversation with them, anything like that, there's tons of different ways to get to that flag to understand, hey, this person might not continue to pay us in the future. So that's a great start, but the big question is, what can you do after that? What can you do to, now that you have that information, act on it? So what we needed to do at Better Cloud was exactly this. And we needed to find a way to accomplish with somewhat limited resources, again, 3,000 customers, a seven-person team, what are we going to do to help stem churn? And what are we going to do to improve? So we have a save process. And basically, the main goals of this were to create really a low barrier, easy to set up process that felt very white glove and could be applied to just about all of our customers. Um, you need buy-in from your C-suite to do this because there's, as you'll see, as we go into the process, you're going to need to escalate. You're going to need that. The good news is this shouldn't be too hard to do because pretty much everyone in the business, if you have a customer success team, you don't want churn. So building out a process to help stop churn helps that. Uh, you have to be prepared to iterate. You're not going to get anything right the first time. You need to make sure that as you're going out and building these processes, you're constantly working to better yourself, better the process, better your team, better everything in the, in the way. And again, to that point, don't expect everything to be perfect all at once. So, quick story. Uh, we have a customer who we will call the company. They have a great generic logo there. Um, they are a middle market tech company. They want to cancel their account midterm. They're not happy with us, that kind of thing. And this is actually a true story. Uh, again, not actually called the company. but. Uh, they were one of the first ones to go through this process for us. So we'll take a look at the process. We'll see how this all played out for this customer. All right. So step one, you'll see a common theme here. Symptoms. Customers will become at risk. Your champion leaves. You don't have access to a decision maker. They're not adopting the product. They didn't have a kickoff call during onboarding. They had a poor support experience. There's a million different ways someone can become at risk. The first and most important thing that you can do is flag that for tracking. I think we've heard just about every speaker today say that data is king in one way or another. If you can't flag it, you can't track it, you can't improve upon it, the rest of this will be worthless. So the first thing, absolutely flag it. So for our company, super easy way to flag it. They wrote in wanting to cancel. So what do we do in that case? We use Salesforce. We flag them as someone who's at risk. So from there, we need to inform the family. And this is that escalation point that a lot of individual contributors may not necessarily feel most comfortable with. And it's that time where you have to say to your boss that that customer is at risk and that you have to sort of swallow your pride a little bit and go in there and admit that, hey, you know, something is going on here. We need to do X, Y, Z to right the ship. 
So escalation is key because once you have that, you have buy-in from your director, your CRO, your CEO, your product team, your support team, whomever, and it allows you to rally the troops to really help work on this issue. So with our customer here, the company, uh, we flagged them as at risk because they wrote in. We let myself know, we let our CRO know, and there was a support issue, so we brought in our director of support as well. So we have the key players aligned and ready to work on this. So step three, diagnosis. This is pretty crucial. So one thing that we wanted to do, and this sort of ties back to the low barrier, is take a process we already do every single day, which is onboarding. And we basically want to replicate it within this process. So what we do is we flag that a customer's at risk. We've alerted the key people internally. We now need to actually talk to the customer. And we're doing what we basically call an engagement kickoff call. So very similar as to how you'd have uh, a onboarding call, your first call with a customer when they purchase, you basically want to do that same exact thing again, but this time with the mindset that this customer is actually at risk and that you need to, to help turn things around. And the goal of this call is really to figure out the why they are at risk. So you have someone writing in saying they want to cancel, that's an effect in essence. That's not really the driving point why. Is it because they don't see value in the product? Is it because they're going out of business? Is it because they lost budget? There's a million different reasons. The way you're going to prescribe a solution to them is knowing what that why is first. So absolutely crucial part of this process. So for us, we had that kickoff call with the customer, uh, the company, and um, for them, you know, it was they just felt they were not seeing value. They felt they paid us X dollars for the year, and they are not seeing a return on that investment. So for us, it's a simple ROI process that we need to go through with them. So that's all well and good. You know the why. You've escalated. You've done all you need to do. You need to get agreement to treat this customer. They are not going to just sign up on the dotted line to go through this process, you need to get buy-in from them. And so anyone who's gone through a more traditional type of sales training will know the phrase upfront contract, but you need to get their buy-in to want to actually improve and want to re-engage in your product. By getting them to agree and to say that, yes, I'm committed to really working on this and to try and get the most out of your product, then you'll be able to actually go through the process. If you don't get this, they can back out at any time. You really don't have that commitment. You're not working together as a partnership. And you ultimately don't really have a chance to move forward in this process and succeed. So getting that upfront contract is absolutely, absolutely crucial as well. So that said, actually treatment now. You know the person's sick. You've told everyone in your family. You got agreement to treat, you actually have to go treat them. So this is where everyone in this room is going to have a totally different process than what we do because you have a different product, then you have a different product, you have a different product, we have a different product, et cetera. The steps to re-engage a customer in each one of these is not going to be the same. You know, the sticky parts of Better Cloud are not gonna be the sticky parts of Clicktail or gonna be the sticky parts of anything else. So what we wanna do with treatment is really come up with a customized engagement plan. And the good news about this, again, thinking back to low barrier, is you have a lot of the resources needed to accomplish this already at your disposal. You probably have some sort of onboarding process that gets people trained in the product. You have a support knowledge base that can directly tie back towards the particular parts of your application or your tool or your software or anything like that that people should be working on. You may have best practices guides or anything like that, but now that you know the why and you have their agreement to work on this, you can basically pull from these different areas and really give the customer what feels like a customized treatment plan for them. And through a series of calls or meetings or depending on the size of the customer, you fly out there or maybe it's even even an email if they're a smaller one. You're giving them something that feels very white glove with very little effort from your team. And it really can help just reinvigorate that customer. So you're treating, it's going well, you're on the road to recovery. What that is is celebrating wins. So People don't know what they don't know, and if this customer is coming to you and they're at risk, they probably have maybe not the best perception of your product, maybe not the best feeling about it. You need to be the one in customer success to escalate those wins to the customer. And when I say celebrate wins, I mean internally and externally. So in our case with the company, their engagement plan was to get 
using more of the sticky functionality of our product, working on automation, some security side of things, really the hard hitting features that deliver the most value, if you will. And the best way to deliver wins on that, since it was an ROI based sort of engagement plan, is to show them the ROI that they're getting each call you do or each step in the way. And that really helps say that, hey, this upfront contract we made together, this investment we share, this partnership we're building is paying off each step we take. The good news about this too is if someone's not engaged in the product and they all of a sudden become engaged in the product, it's incredibly easy to then prove out ROI because you're basically going from zero to anything. So this step in essence works itself out. On the internal side too, you know, we've talked a little bit about in other sessions how, you know, the somewhat customer drama can be a weighing element on a CSM. You know, you are constantly having to be that wall internally and everything like that. You should celebrate wins with your CSM team. You know, if you have someone who's going through this process, a member of your team, the ROI that that customer get, is getting is directly related to the work that CSM is doing. So that is a win just as much for the individual contributor on your team as it is for the customer. You save a customer ultimately, that is also a win for your team. You need to make sure that CSMs are feeling that by going through this process, by making these investments in time, that they are also absolutely contributing to this process and to the company's goals. Again, outside of renewals, but a win nonetheless. So, giving them a bill of good health. For us, the company, we were able to show ROI along the way. They were using some of those more sort of sticky features in our product. The last thing you want to do is basically the final win celebration, if you will, a final wrap-up call. And the purpose of this is to say, hey, you came to us a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago, two months ago, whatever your engagement plan took place was, and you say, these were the problems. We went through steps A, B, C, and D as a solution. You saw ROI of X dollars or this time savings or whatever your individual metrics are. How do you feel now? And again, it's almost going back to that upfront contract and it's saying, can you say with confidence, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, that you are now in a better state than you were before? And again, you're getting that buy-in, which you can then use anywhere down the line. You know you can say, hey, we went through these steps and you told me at that time, after going through these trainings, you were in a much better place, like what has changed? You can constantly come back to this. So doing this final call and getting sort of that final check on the box, very, very important. Step eight, the final step, follow-up appointments. So you gotta give that ongoing love. This is probably the, foundation of any CSM's job, but just because you go through this process with a customer does not mean that they're free and clear forever and they're gonna be a customer forever and ever and ever and ever. You need to make sure that you are constantly fulfilling your CSM duties, showing them the love they need, staying in touch, doing business reviews, whatever your processes are. The worst thing I've seen happen is you go through this process, you assume that everything is okay, and they revert right back. So you need to ensure that just because someone has gone through a save process and you've taken what may appear to be an extra sort of length of your time and investment into this one customer, that does not mean the day is stopped. Following through on those day-to-day -day functions and, and that ongoing love is absolutely important as, as well, excuse me. So. For us, company renewed. Yay. Um, a couple things we learned though. Customers appreciate honesty and openness. Uh, the good news about probably any CSM is you have the ability to talk to people and connect with them. By being open and honest with your customer, they're not gonna see this as going through some pre-cutout process and anything like that. Like They're going to know and they're gonna feel that they are connecting with you and this is a partnership that you're working on. Again, too, if you need buy-in and you need that upfront contract, things like, hey, we want to make sure you're actually getting the value you paid for and being almost blunt about it pays off. Um, getting that honesty and openness and that sort of set of dialogue is, is very important. That said, on the flip side, definitely don't force it either. Um, there's sometimes factors that are totally out of your control. Someone goes out of business, they, you know, are no longer using a product that your product is dependent on. You can't 
keep every customer in business in perpetuity. You can't keep everyone. There may be some people who don't want to be saved. At the end of the day, like the company's reputation and use of time is important. So if there is someone who is completely unsavable, definitely don't force it. You know, use your time wisely. CSMs have enough to do. If they're going to be going through this process, make sure that it's for the customers who are ultimately worth saving and want to be saved. So what's next for all of you guys? Pretty straightforward, but absolutely the first thing you have to do, guaranteed homework, is track everything. I don't care if none of you decide to set up a save process after this, but the one takeaway you absolutely should do is start measuring the number of customers who become at risk and how many you actually save in the process. If you don't have a process, that's fine, but at least start with the data. You know, I can say that we were saving maybe 15% of customers before we had this process. And that is what let us know we needed this process. So at the very least, start tracking. Um, don't fear escalation. You know, there's sometimes that culture of, hey, I don't want to let my boss know. I don't want to let the CRO know. I'm going to get in trouble. I didn't do this right. I guarantee I will fight any of you about it that not letting someone know and then a customer churning is infinitely worse than the conversation you have to have up front that says, hey, this customer's at risk. Don't be afraid of escalation. It's, it's, it's a good thing. And finally, celebrate those wins. You know, both externally, internally, keep your team focused, keep your team engaged, and then make sure you're repeating back to the customer that the time they've invested in you is worthwhile in this process. That's what I got. Questions? a good question, and this gets back to the always iterate, um, but for us, we try to stick to those initial goals. Um, if the goals are changing, we may not have found out what the initial problem was to begin with. So if you have a solid set of goals going through, you probably actually did hit the why. That said, maybe you have someone else come in, they have a different goal. We'll try to be flexible, but realistically, what we want to say is, here was the plan. Did we check all these boxes against the plan? Yes, no. Um, you then get a data point, and it's much easier to track. It's sort of a cleaner cut process. So I'd say push, pushing back a little is dig deeper into the why uh, when it comes to that. But yeah, we've had people go through this time and time again if they have to. Um, by that, I mean probably twice. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so with 3,000 customers, we have a lot of small ones who maybe we don't find out are at risk until renewal time. Um, you can definitely do accelerated-ish versions of this. We've cut it down to, in those last minute cases, like, like an hour long call, um, in terms of the actual engagement plan step, still flagging and tracking. Um, so that you can turn around in a week or whatever their schedule allows. Uh, but usually the way we see it with like more of our core customer base is a series of two to four-ish calls with the customer, probably over a month-long period. Um, and that seems to have worked really well because you then sort of get this drumbeat of being in the customer's mind a little bit more as well. Um, so yeah, but there are definitely are times where, hey, the renewal's a, you know, six weeks away and we really need to do this now, so you can abbreviate for sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, one of the biggest ones are if you have like the end user of the product is your only contact and they're fed up with it for maybe not a good enough reason in my mind, like, oh, we don't like that the interface is this or that it doesn't cover this one super small use case. So for us, you know, the best person to have on that call and I think when any CSMs call is the decision makers of any kind, um, 
So taking it out of the context of a functionality type discussion and bringing it more into the framework of an ROI or a value, almost like a resell in a way, uh, is the best way to do it because then it somewhat forces that person's boss to be on and you start talking to the right people about the right things. Uh, but yeah, and again, the, literally the line that has worked the most for me is we want you to get what you're paying for. Like you spend this many dollars on this product for these many months, we are this far in and we want to make sure the rest of the time is worthwhile. Yep. Yeah, so when we started, we had automated renewal notifications going out 90 days, 60 days, 30 days before their renewal date. Um, for some of the smaller customers who were sort of self-service, they would not be super responsive to quotes and it ends up being can be a billing nightmare and just cause a whole bunch of headaches. One change we made that has actually for whatever reason, just really improve people's response rates, and that's the catalyst for any of this, is doing an email, even though it's automated, as a follow-up, being one line, hey, did you see the quote I sent over? Um, and that sparks conversation, like people are like, yes, I'm not renewing, or yes, all is good to go. But at the very least for us, having that number of customers across that sort of fewer number of CSMs, it at least gets the inbound conversation started quicker so we're not constantly having to chase and to find this problem. Yeah. Good question. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite for not tracking this now. Uh, but um, I would say it's definitely less than half the time is in remedy. Um, you know, probably 15% of time is spent on this save process. You'll have your on and off, you know, red flags during the customer life cycle. That probably takes up some other proportion of the time. But the best defense is a good offense in this sense. So <laughs> um, helping get the customer involved earlier and being more proactive helps there be fewer people going through this process generally. Um, but yeah, I'd say 15 to 25-ish percent of time is spent on the true defense of having to save a customer. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate it.